Hello and welcome to another deck design video. Uh, this is going to be, well first, this is going to be awkward as hell. Um, I don't know if you can see very well, but these are not, <laughs> some of these are not normal magic cards. Um, this is my first casual deck I'm going to be uploading. Um, I'm uploading it first because it usually gets, it's mostly here just for shock value and it works fantastic when I'm playing with new people. Um, I don't get to play it very often because it's not very strong in a 60 card format. Most people in my area are just playing standard or modern. So casual 60 doesn't really get to happen too much unless I'm playing with a bunch of new people and uh, some of the cards in the deck are obviously not geared for newer people. Um, so what we have here uh, for card to size comparison, this is a Tarox. Um, he's out because I'm trying to have my friends talk me into making a Grandeur EDH deck. Um, but next to Tarox we have what you may be more familiar with is like one of the commander size cards, uh, Bissandra. This is also the same size of card as a Plain Chase card is. Um, also the Arch Enemy cards. Uh, and here, this is a box topper. Um, this particular one is, I have a, a, the next deck I'll be uploading for casual is a box topper deck where uh, these cards were kind of given out um, in a booster, or a, I'm sorry, a, a box around the 7th uh, and 8th, or I'm sorry, 8th and 9th edition, some in between, where they were highlighting some of the most commonly seen cards at the time. Um, they, essentially, I have an entire deck of trying to make this is a deck builder's deck to play around with, but I'll get to that later. But again, this is something that's even larger than your generals. Um, as you see, I have to make custom backs for these to actually play with because they're, they, they have artwork on the back. Um, but finally, this one in the background, uh, these are the Gigantor cards. Uh, these were, as you can see, they're not for play use. Lies. Um, where these came from, these were kind of like player rewards. Um, I, I never played super competitively when I first started. I, I started back around Mirage. Um, but around that area, uh, you could actually get player rewards that were not just like booster packs and whatnot. You would actually get first, second, third place depending on what you got. Um, these, this is just a few extra cards I have, so I'll get the little sideboard junk out of the way. Um, but essentially, for example, uh, this is for winter season. I, I don't have the years of when you can make them or earn them. Um, but different quality of cards were given to, given out to different people for whatnot. Um, most of these, I believe, you can actually, if you're, if you're familiar with combo or the, the history of magic, uh, Cadaver's Bloom was the first known combo deck, and there's actually enough of these printed to actually recreate the original Cadaver's Bloom deck. Um, but most of these cards are some of your Alpha Beta classics. Um, there's not a lot to select from. Um, so to make strong decks, you're, you're not going to make anything that hasn't been played for a very long time, and a lot of the cards are underpowered today's standards. Um, so I made a black-red one. Black and red is my favorite color combination. There wasn't enough in mono-red or mono-black to run, essentially, effectively. There, there's a few artifacts, but not enough. Um, so I just put one together. I've been collecting these, actually, for over a decade. <laughs> like, uh, when these were actually being handed out, a lot of people just didn't care for them. They thought they were goofy. They would either frame them or use them as a mouse pad or something silly. Um, so they're not really considered valuable. Sadly, they are getting very, very hard to get to, to find. Um, I haven't been able to finish the deck, actually, for what I originally wanted. Um, there's a dragon, I think it's Crimson Dragon, that it's it's one of these, and it's just one of the hard, very, very hard to get ones. It was like very limited print, only so many got it. But to be honest, the price on these nowadays is kind of stupid. There's no value to this card. Um, some online retailers still have them, like ABU does. But I mean, how do you how do you evaluate the price of this when you can't play this unless like it is absolute hell? If you look, these these are kind of sleeved. Um, I'm using essentially a portfolio sleeve for pictures that you would picture frame, um, something like that, and they're they're held to shuffle. Um, but this is something that for some reason they're, well, it, for obvious reasons, they're very hard to get because they're not valuable. Um, no one really cared for them. They're thicker cardboard, so a lot of them are just massively damaged. I mean, think of the size of your magic card and how easy it is to get it damaged now and think of something more than three times the size. Um, so finding them in good quality is hard. Uh, finding them is hard in general unless you're online because a lot of people, they're, they're pointless to hold on to. So. But this is a, actually this is a playable deck. I got it all the way up to 60 cards and plus a few extra lands. 
Um, even though I'm still missing the crimsons, I, I still enjoy throwing this out every now and then. So I thought I'd just go ahead and show it here too. Um, so to start with, we have some creatures. Uh, I like Black Knight. He's pretty cheap. Um, again, there's not a whole bunch to select from in the deck, so I'm running three of them. Um, a very good example of why there's just not a lot of select through them. Uh, Horloom actually made the cut. Uh, there's uh, Pyroclasms in here, so the two three is actually pretty good. Um, but I'm only running, I think, two of him, yeah. Uh, and then there's the classic Guardian Beast. Uh, a lot of people don't really know what he does. See this one right here, it says, like, fourth place. Um, Minotaur doesn't have it, of course. Uh, what you'll see right here, uh, you can see the season and the place where the, uh, the, the, like, the player got. Um, so we've got the Guardian Beast. Um, of course, the more the, the classic one is the Joam de Jin. Um, I can't pronounce any of this. Juzum? Juzum? Jin? I don't know. Even when we were playing my local shop back in 98, 99, 2000, no one had any idea how to pronounce any of this crap. Uh, but he's actually pretty strong. As you see, there's a lot of ways... Well, I actually have a pair of uh, lotuses in here, so I can actually get him out incredibly fast. A so turn one Jin is actually devastating, even in a goofy, giant, funzy deck. So we got two, no, three of him. No, actually four of him, wow. <laughs> um, and Fallen Angel is actually my favorite card printed to date. Um, I have a small collection of 7th edition foily ones, and I just, Fallen Angel is one of my first favorite cards that I kind of fell in love with. I've built decks around her. Um, so of course she made the cut just because I like her a lot. And of course in a deck where I have access to early mana and strange things like that, it, with a limited selection of creatures, of course she's going to make it there. I think there's four of her. And uh, finally, the only white border card in here is the... Oh, yeah, she's also a third place. Actually, I think there was two versions of her. One, some of these say fourth, don't they? Yeah. Um, I think this just came out in a difference. Like, this is... Well, they're both summer season, so I don't understand. Anyways, this one says fourth, and this one says third place. So if you know any trivia about that, just educate me away, please. <laughs> uh, but I have three Shivens in here. Again, I wanted these to be the Crimson Hellkite, but I just can't find them. I'm not really willing to spend whatever people think they're actually worth. <laughs> um, like if there was a more reasonable price for these or any way of actually gauging the price of these correctly I would probably find them easier but at the same time I honestly haven't seen one for a couple of years so I, it may never just happen um, but these always do bug me because I don't like white border cards but as you see there's just not a lot to pick from um, there's a few spells in the deck I love my incinerate this is a second place one from the radiant 1998 season uh, then we have some actual hard removal. Well, not hard. Non-black creature removal can't be regenerated. Um, I used to run this in almost everything. I, one of my favorite artworks of Dark Banishing is the 7th edition one. Um, because it just looks fantastic in foil. I kind of, I've always enjoyed this. And this is a good example of power creep. The uh, three mana instant destroy non-black can't be regenerated. Compared to something like a um, Doomblade, for example. Which, this is, this was like a, yeah, I can't go on about that. <laughs> Either no, you don't. Um, going to the sorceries, this is, you see, like a first place, the Tempest Season. Um, I have a pair of Earthquakes. Yeah, two of them in here. Again, I don't like the idea of killing my own creatures, but in this deck I don't have a lot of options sometimes. So this is kind of my only board wipe past Pyroclasm. Uh, speaking of which, we have Pyroclasm, Winter 99. Um, there's three in the Yeah, there's three of them here. Um, this helps because a lot of my creatures, except for the, uh, the Black Knight there, is going to live through it. Um, I don't have a lot of draw on the deck. I have some land tech and I have two wheels. Um, I just like Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> and uh, to get the Jin out early, I have a pair of Lotuses. I didn't want to just go and get uh, like a play set of these. Um, ironically enough, there's a really funny video posted by Cardboard Crack talking about these. Um, I'll try to hyperlink it here. I, the reason I chose to post this first is because someone sent that to me remembering this ridiculous deck. Um, but these help me get a Jin out on turn one. Um, and that's usually all it takes to make someone not want to play. Um, don't have a lot to do in the deck, really. Uh, like, there's just not a whole bunch of cards that are on curve. Because when I'm playing this against one of my friend's casual decks, since the deck is so erratic, I don't really want to put all the expensive stuff in here. So I ended up putting these in here. Um, although I'm kind of smitten with replacing them with two more Chaos Orbs. This is the funnest card in the deck. I don't care how, how cool it is to play with a Black Lotus. This this is hilarious. Um, Chaos Orb is banned in a lot of uh, formats for a reason. It says pay one flip this this card into the air, at least a foot over cards, and whatever it lands on is destroyed. 
um, were sacrificed. Yeah, I think they're, they're buried, so they're destroyed. And then I sacrifice Chaos Orb. So having this card, this massive card, just flipped in the air. And, of course, I, I got really good after a while. So if I'm flipping things around in the air, and all of a sudden I just land that on, like... Just think of how much of your board state could be covered with this card. <laughs> um, since it's such a gimmicky deck, I only ended up starting with one. Although I may replace these with more Chaos Orbs because it's so fun. Um, but I do have a pair of manipulators in here. Again, the deck doesn't have a lot of consistent strong win conditions other than early randomness. So I got these. Um, being a two-color deck, I don't actually have any good dual lands. Um, but I do get a chance to running two libraries. Uh, these are always very fun to drop on turn one if the opponent's gone first, so I can just start going a little ridiculous. It's actually kind of fun to combo that with the, uh, an early ivory tower, so I can just keep drawing and gaining life, and it makes a very hard tempo to compete against because I'm having a massive card advantage in life gain. So we've got two libraries. Um, and then, of course, we have just a giant pile of enormous freaking lands. Um, but yeah, this is this is something that is just always interesting to me because I I like 60 card casual. Um, a lot of people, when you think of 60 card casual, you will see like just absolute trash pulled from a booster pack and making use of every uncommon and common. So a lot of people don't think 60 card casual casual may include something like this, um, but it does. <laughs> uh, shuffling this is again absolute hell. What I usually have to end up doing is breaking it into like three piles and pile shuffling and then pile shuffling. Um, but for the shock effect, it's always a really good time, uh, especially just if no one's ever seen this before and they're all serious about like, oh, I have this really awesome combo deck, I'm going to go infinite turns, and then I drop this giant thing and the entire table shakes, and yeah. <laughs> um, but that's the point, actually, of my casual career. I enjoy casualness. I enjoy playing cards and magic that are not, like, I'm going to strictly combo out as fast and early as possible. I like playing all the cards, given a chance, if they all don't suck. Uh, so do stay tuned. I actually have a, a pretty large complement of casual 60 card decks. Um, amongst my play group, the the more, more competitive meta, like I, my, my group's grouped up into a few different groups themselves, but my competitive meta calls me the dirty casual because I keep enjoying stupid shit like this. And my standard decks, if I ever play standard, tend to have some kind of gimmick to them. Um, but I do have a few funny decks to post. I'll probably post the uh, the box topper deck right now. It's actually in between, like I was repairing it, where some of the cards got uh, damaged. Um, but yeah, do hold tight. I'll be back.